Hey guys, Billy Ray here, back out in the shop where it's brood old school. I uh, just want to do a real quick video, uh, talk a little bit about valve angle. I still have the head set up on the flow bench to do that test with the port plate. It is coming up. So, uh, valve angle. Uh, we like to get that valve away from the cylinder, cylinder wall, and basically unshrouding the valve. And there's several ways to unshroud. You know, uh, some guys go with a little smaller valve. You know, get away from that 219, maybe go 218, or even a little bit bigger than that, but just a little bit. The bigger bore, a bigger bore, of course, on shrouds. Um, so, but what I've done in the past, off and on, on my own personal cylinder heads, depending on my builds and everything, I actually try to change the valve angle. And I do that not for like high lift, it's more of a low lift deal. I would like to change the angle so that at low lift, it's pulling away further away from that cylinder wall. And I feel you, that's, a, that's a bigger gain there than it is when the valve is hanging way out in the, cil in the c center of the cylinder already. So I'm thinking, I'm always trying to figure ways, you know how I, my brain works, uh, to make power. Um, and I don't care if it's only one horsepower, two horsepower, those all add up. So if you made one or two here, you make three or four here, you make another one or two here, those are all going to build to make power. And that's just what I like doing. So however I can do it, and usually it's um, make power in a budget, is what I always say. But it ain't always a budget. But anyway, so changing the valve angle, I believe, helps low lift. And that's what I've done over the past. And so I just want to kind of quickly show you how I do it. Because I, I, this is just, I don't keep any secrets from you guys. I, everything I do, I've already showed. And a lot of guys like to keep their own thing to themselves and not really show it. But doing guide work on any seat and guide machine, it, you, you have the correct way of doing it, or you can, if you set the head up, let's say you set the head up wrong and you cut through there, you, you just change that angle. So that's basically what I'm doing, but it's not really wrong. And I'll, I'll explain why. So. When I set this head on these stands here, I have to use a, because this is an IDL and it doesn't have a floating table or a swivel table, they're on these stands and you've seen this before, I've shown on other videos, I have to use, this is for the, the C's, the M's, the 400's, it's a little, it's another little stand, a little bushing that goes in there and then that's going to hold the head at, a, at an angle. And most guys that are use this type of machine already know all that part. So that's going to hold the head at an angle, and that's how you get your angle to do your guide work. But now I need to change that angle a little bit. So I would get the Boss 302. This is the Boss 302 bushing, and we'll call it a rise bushing. And this is the C, the M, and the 400. And if you look real close, it's gonna kind of be hard to see. There's a slight different angle. So we'll say 69, big bow. So I run the 302, the 302 rise bushing instead of this one. And it sets my head at a different angle. And it's actually the angle I needed to put more into the center of the cylinder. So if you ever put a bare block, get you a bare block in an engine stand, put a head on it with two checker springs, flip it over and look, and you can kind of push the valves in, you kind of see how they work. And then you can see how it's up against the cylinder wall, and you can probably think, man, if I just kick that out a little bit at low lift, I could be a little farther and, and maybe make a little, build a little more power right there. So I used the 302 bushing, which is going to set my head a little more crooked, which now, you're trying to run a core drill through here, but a core drill wants to follow, or just like any drill, it wants to follow the existing hole. So it's going to try to bend this, or it's going to try to pull the head over, but it's, you know, whatever it's going to do. But, and then on the IDL, it's got a swivel. So, of course, that's even really going to follow it because it's swiveled, so it's going to be, you know, smooth. So... I actually set that head up, it's all set up, Boss 302.
I put the chuck in. I go ahead and just put a chuck in. I put, I use this drill. Doesn't go in right now. You can break these off, that's fine, because you're, you're going to change all that. I run this drill, and I just take my time, I cut on through. Now this drill actually changed the center hole, I mean, you know, it changed that angle. So now that I did that, you have, of course, your core drill that fit in there already, just fine. This one won't go in, won't go in until I use that drill. Then I use this core drill. So the cool thing about the swivel now is with that new hole I got there, now the core drill is going to follow that new hole, okay? Where if I use the fixed one or something like this, it, you know, it still works as long as you got that angle. It's still, basically still going to kind of do it, but I don't know, the swivel, I know it's following it. So then once I run a core drill through, then of course you're going to run the reamer through, and it's going to follow the core drill hole, and then you can run your guide in. We used to buy blanks back in the day. I haven't bought it in a while. They're guides that were with no hole in the middle. And we used to do a lot of tricky stuff, especially on wedge, you know, inline heads. We do a lot of, uh, we used to kick the, the valves in a little bit on a, on a, inline head like a lot of circle track guys have done it for because you can't see it and you still run the stock rocker because of the way the ball is so they couldn't really tell that this thing was pushing because it just rolls up on the ball a little bit it's probably won't yeah you know keep an eye on those on that part of it there the balls there maybe make sure just stay and give it a lube and everything but anyway that's another story now you run this in so now this is your new angle here which now your spring pocket, of course, is going to be off a little bit. No big deal because you're cutting your spring pockets for your new springs and it's guided off your guide. So now that's going to get cut off of this guide. So you're fine there. Seats. Okay, the seat's going to be off. But there's enough material in here that I found over time. Unless you're changing inserts, it would be even better. But I'm not a big insert um, guy unless I need them. Um, so there's enough in here if you do your two angle, four angle, three angle, seven angle, five angle, whatever angles you like doing, cutting or grinding these seats, you can square that up following this guide. So now you have your angle. The only other angle the thing you'll have to work with, of course, now is your, if you go with uh, screw in studs and guide plates, which brings up another little point. I don't know, several times I've heard people say, I took my heads that have the, the have studs put in, or guide plates and studs machine, and they're off a little bit. They must not know how to set it up, they're off a little bit. So we always blame this right here. Well, that sometimes these are not off a little bit, it's the actual guide. A lot of shops use liners. Liners are fast, quick money, um, in and out, let's just say. Liners, I don't do liners. Uh, I've done liners, because I've helped other shops out and that's the way they do it, so I gotta do their way, and I've, and I've put liners in. I don't use liners uh, here at all. I, personally, I don't use them. And then I, I found them to come loose. I found them stuck on, gut, on valves when I pull them out. Um, they've moved up and kind of wrinkled, and they just scratch the side of the valve stems. Liners to me, it's just not a thing, okay? But I know tons of shops that use them and swear by them, which is great, you know, and then I say I've done it before, but remember when you put a line, let's say there's a wore out guide, and they didn't want to put a false guide in, well, when you put a liner in, you're basically following that, if, because you put a little cone in there, and you're, got, you're, you know, you're using the drill, whatever setup you got, you might lean a little bit, or, you know, the seat that you had the cone on isn't really holding it right, so now, if you got a little bit crooked, when you do the valve job on the other side, of course, of course, now we're grinding this and kind of straightening it up. It's really easy to do, and that's why you have these different angles. You can actually square that up, like a basic valve job, let's just say. But now that the valve is in here, the valve is slightly at a different little bit of an angle. I'm not talking just Cleveland head. I'm talking, you know, any, any cylinder head that, that you put a liner in, you can get off like that. Even a false guide, you can. 
uh, depending on the setup. So now with this angle and this angle, this might be the problem, but we always blame this. Let's say we have all the guide work done, the whole valve job done by a shop, and then a year later, you decide you want to have this done, but you took another place because that place wasn't there no more, or you moved, or you might have took the same place, and then they cut this. Well, these are already were set up one way, so that's that basically, so you don't know which is actually off, but we've always seemed to say it's this here, where I've always felt it's not 100% these guys, sometimes it can be the guides, just like what I'm doing right now. I'm moving that guide to a different angle, so yes, this is gonna be wrong if I do this correctly, if that makes sense. If I cut these where I'm supposed to, it's not gonna ride right. So, that's, and again, that's a whole other thing there too. So, same with the exhaust, we got, uh, we got uh, the 400, the, the C's, the M's, exhaust, here's the 302, and then if I try to get them together right there, you can see the difference. I know it's slight, but it's enough that a low lift, it pulls that, that valve away from the cylinder. So that might, you might gain right there because of the time we're on the low lift stuff. So if I can get it at 300 lift to pull this distance where it took, if, let's say, 375 or 400 lift to be that same distance without changing angle, if, if that made sense. But it, it'll, trust me, that's how that, my theory, that's how it works. I'm trying to get away from that wall and mostly at low lift. So that's what I've done. It's kind of crazy. Um, just another little trick. We a lot of us have them. We show them or we don't show them. And I don't mind showing little things. That right there might just seem like a lot of work, but really it isn't. It's not as bad as I kind of made it sound. Maybe it's it's pretty simple. And yes, if, and if you can just get that valve away, like I said, just get you a bare block. Put the cylinder head on it with some checker springs, flip it over, look straight down, and you will see the valves start opening them, different lifts, and you can see how they, they pull away. Then maybe you can gauge a little bit, you know, from the edge of the valve to the cylinder. Oh, wow, you know, it's like this at a certain lift. I just think if you would have kicked that angle off a little bit. The only other thing that will change, maybe the valve pocket on the uh, pistons. Uh, it won't be a big change there either, but yeah, you may have to, or you may not have to. That just depends on how much room that piston gave you. So anyway, that was just another little thing I did. Just wanted to bring that one up too. So just remember to be safe out there and always burn rubber. Thanks.